Hello everybody, my name is Jacob Crash. I am an amateur filmmaker and photographer, and today I'm gonna show you how to make your footage go from this to this. Today, we're gonna be announcing and, well actually in this, I'm gonna show you my main setup now for uh, filming and doing a bunch of stuff. This is the new setup, completely new, something that you haven't seen before, and uh, I'm gonna stick with this setup for a while. But I'm gonna explain the basics of how to get a wonderful image just like this, and I'm gonna show you how to do it without any external color grading. And currently, I'm using OBS to record this right now, using 10-bit color and extra footage and a bunch of stuff like that. I'm currently kind of cheating the system using a separate capture card to film it through this. And this is what you, this is probably the best idea that you could use, your, the, the best thing you could do if you're using your computer and you're not filming outside away, away from your home. I'm very sorry for the yawning. It is currently midnight, Halloween. It is Halloween right now, so happy Halloween everybody. It is literally 12 a.m. Happy Halloween everybody. Hope you have a spooky season. I am exhausted and I'm gonna bust through this video. So, I am using the three point lighting system in my own way. I kind of like this harsher shadow here. So what I have is um, one main key light right there. I have this colored light here, and I have a light right behind me. I kind of like the bluish colored light, but I might switch it for more of a yellowish tone. I don't quite know yet. We'll, uh, we'll see how that goes, but so far this is the plan. I am recording my audio using my Zoom H1N and the uh, Rode Smart Lab Plus, which that will be in a different video, and I'm currently export um, like having that go through Audacity. I'm using OBS to record all this 20, 24 frames per second, which is input into my Nikon D4 and OBS here. So um, let's just go through the settings of my camera at the moment. What color profile I'm using? I'm currently using the standard color profile because I just felt like that would be easier than actually color grading outside. So this is just a, a basic kind of gaming setup where you can just be sitting right here, you could be looking at your monitor here, and you can just be gaming like this. It's just an easy gaming setup. Or you can be, mon have them be staying, sitting right here and then have a monitor there. Just have an easy side profile gaming kind of thing. So, um, yes. So let's just get right into it. So I am currently filming on the Nikon D4, which is a prosumer camera. It shoots 1080p at 30 frames per second. It can also do 720p at 60 frames per second. As you probably know if you saw my last video talking about the Nikon D4, this is mainly for sports. This camera is mainly for film. It is one of Nikon's few and uh, well, few and also incredible film-based cameras. They're really meant for filmmaking instead of just normal photography. This camera was really designed for sports photography with its 11 frames per second shooting rate on continuously high shooting and it was meant for shooting cinematic video at 1080p at 24 frames per second which is cinematic standard when it comes to frame rate. I love the fact that it has a 60 frames per second option although the bummer is that it is 720p so you are losing a bit of that high resolution. That's okay, you can up-res that using an AI upscaler, or you can just up-res it in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve without using any super scaling. But it still is a shame that you are losing such high resolution. Now I'm using this $40 lighting kit. I am using all three lights at the moment. A white light, a blue light, and a red light. I like having the background light just pop. It just, it really brings some character and some color contrast here into the scene. I might actually move a blue light back there and then put this, make this yellow. I still haven't figured that quite out yet, but I just wanted to inform you all that yes, I'm coming out with a, a small mini series talking about this specific setup. And just talking about my new setup and how I'm gonna be using it and how I'm gonna be editing through it and all that type of stuff.
thirst. Sorry about that. Um, currently I have it set to manual focus because the audio, the autofocus in such a low light kind of has some issues. I love this Nikon D4 mainly for its low light capabilities and has, it's able to reach um, ISOs of 256,000, but obviously at that high ISO, it is not really usable footage. It, I just, it's not, it's not true usable footage. It's painful to be looking at. Um, the highest ISO that is usable really on this camera would be ISO 12,800. And I was actually shooting at ISO 128,000 at the very beginning of this video when I had no lights and I was just using the internal capabilities of this camera. So it even, it wasn't even going through its maximum processing capabilities. But as you can see, there's a bunch of noise and a bunch of grain and it really did not look high quality. Now, something to really, that would really up the high quality here is so uh, let me uh, turn off the internal color grading that I'm using here in, uh, uh, I'm using here in OBS. So this is what is coming straight out of the camera. And as you can tell, it really isn't reading my skin tones properly because of the automatic white balance. I did not properly set my white balance beforehand, but most gamers don't really care about film white balance. They want something that looks sharp, looks good, and just starts working right out of the box. So this is kind of a makeshift version of that so they can get mainly what they want and what they paid for. So it can look like great like this. So what I did is I, I, I made a color grading tab or color correction uh, filter here on my, uh, on my uh, video the device output. And it's, I just kept it labeled color correction. And what I do is I up the contrast for the Nikon D4 um, by 0.5%. And bring down, or actually, no, I bring up the saturation by 0.2%, just increasing that saturation because it just didn't have enough saturation. That is something I kind of noticed with this camera. It seems to be a little bit flat when it comes to the more reddish and yellowish tones due to uh, its skin tone processing. It does not have the best skin tone processing. In fact, I mainly have to do some editing in DaVinci Resolve to get proper skin tones coming out of this camera. Personally, Canon does have a lot better skin tone reproduction, but I'm currently using the Nikon and this is a much better upgrade compared to my old Canon T3. Now let's see, so this is what it looks like without the color correction and this is what it looks like with the color correction. It kind of boosts everything up and kind of adds a little bit more saturation so that looks much better. Then I apply a color grading LUT, which you can actually find on the TB10 Studios website, tb10studios.wixsite.com. And this one is the Fall Punch LUT, which kind of gives you that orange teal look. And if I apply it, this is currently set to about 50%. So if I apply it, this is what it would look like. It looks pretty nice. If I maxed out the percentage, this is what it would look like. And as you can tell, it doesn't look very good. And if I zeroed it out, there was no point in using it. So I'm gonna bring it back to about uh, 50%. And then we've got this color here. Now obviously, it is getting that teal look from this uh, bluish light here. So I might change that to a yellow one because I might work a little bit better with this LUT and then have the background be blue because that would work very well with this specific LUT. Now, like I said, three point lighting setup, but this is kind of like a makeshift because I didn't want to have any lights over here because this is my main room and I just don't have enough room to just be surrounding my desk with all of these lights and studio equipment because I don't have the room for that. I have a very small bedroom. And so what you can do I'm very sorry for your yawning, pardon me. Um, what I did was I just set one right in front of me, like a normal ring light, one right here, and then one right behind me. And it just kind of gave me the general look that I wanted. And so, uh, uh, let me um, tell you the, sh the importance of setting like shutter speed and things like that on your camera. That is something that is so extremely important 
This is the three basic fundamentals of exposure, which I will do a more in-depth video on later, but I wanna get the basics out of the way now, just so you understand it. Even if you're using mainly automatic settings, I want you to be using the manual settings um, on your camera. Even if you're doing gaming and things like that, you must be using your manual settings because if your camera quality does not look at least decent, viewers will not be as interested as you might think. So, going to manual settings. If you're shooting at 24 frames per second, which I am, because that's film standard, but most gamers will be shooting at 30 or 60 frames per second. If you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you want a shutter speed of 1 50th so you can get the proper reproduction of motion blur that our eyes can reproduce. Then what you want for YouTube standard, which is 30 frames per second, you want the shutter speed to be 1 60th. So it, it, it's, ten, it's what we call the 180 degree rule. And then after that, what you want if you're doing 60 frames per second is you want 120, uh, the shutter speed of 120th, one over 120th, and on and on and on. It's usually just double your frame rate. That is my suggestion, just double your frame rate. Now, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, obviously not all cameras have a 148th frames per, or, uh, shutter speed, so you just round up to 50th. That's, that's the only way you do it. It just properly reproduces the motion blur. And if you're shooting 25 frames per second, because you know, you're British or European, same thing, 1 50th. Um, shut your a uh, aperture to the lowest possible you can go. So you can get like a really nice reproduction of um, like a blurry bokeh background like this. You really want the bokeh. It really just makes your scene seem three dimensional and absolutely incredible. Now the only thing is you need a very high quality autofocus system just for that though, because blurry back, like if there's a in like focus background and a blurry foreground or blur yourself, it's gonna be hard for the camera to properly autofocus. But you can also use manual, fo manual focus like I am now. Now, something that's also very, very important is ISO, that is the internal camera raising and lowering the exposure internally. So it's just turning off the brightness on an image or taking it down, pretty much. The lower the ISO, the better. The higher the ISO, the more noise is introduced and the more grain is introduced. I'm currently filming at ISO 800. And that just seems to work perfectly for this specific scene. Now it's different for every scene but for this scene, it works the best. So I try to stay with my old camera the um, because of the smaller sensor. Since it was using an APS-C sensor for the Rebel T3 by Canon, I tried not to go over 800 because once I went over ISO 800 or if I maybe went over ISO 1200, it would get very noisy and it would start to get very grainy and the quality would start to severely like drop. Now with this camera, the Nikon, I can reach up to 12,000 ISO and still get a usable image from it. And that's still the same for like the, the uh, for the, uh, the Rebel T3, I could get a usable image out of like 1600. But that, after that, I, it, would, it just wasn't usable. But this is a full frame sensor, so it's much larger. It can handle a lot more light and overall looks a lot better in low light. So I still try to keep the ISO as low as possible, but I try not to go over 4,000 on this camera specifically because I just don't want to introduce a bunch of noise and grain that I have to like do, like get rid of in post-production. It just looks the best for between ISO 100 and 4,000. That's kind of like the sweet spot, is that entire range right there. Well, I just spent 15 minutes talking about this, so um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you had an incredible day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.